Hey, Internet friend, this is Magic Brad with The Magic Brad Show, and I've got Adrian. Yo, Adrian, I bet you get a lot of that. You there, Adrian? I am. Hello. Hello. And I love Rocky. Doing that to you? Go, Yo, Adrian. How are you doing? I love that. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely. And your last name, I looked it up, and it's, you got on here M-A-S, and it, I thought right away, Ma Barker. Do you remember Ma Barker? Yes, of course. There's a museum for Ma Barker, too, here and close to me. Yes, yes. That's my that. Master's of Advertising Specialties designation. That costs a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of energy. Absolutely. Um, that's part of what I want to talk a, lot, a little bit about because my background is in the event industry. The, the magic thing got me into doing events as a performer. And then I got into events and then I started using events to attract people and be like what's called event marketing. And um, I worked with a guy that did a lot of trade shows and they use those promotional products and trade shows a lot, but most exhibitors don't use them right. Exactly. <laughs> and you went to school for it, so you know how to do it right. Not only manufacture them and get them to work, but get them to actually turn a little ROI so they can afford to buy more. Exactly. <laughs> the key. Very true. So where do you live? Where are you located? So I don't want everyone to get jealous, so I'll just say it really quietly. Daytona Beach. <laughs> okay, I, I thought you were <laughs> going to say like Waikiki. For NASCAR, and we're the world's most unusual beach. We literally drive on the beach. Really? Yes. <laughs> you mean it's like, amazing. You mean like special Jeeps and stuff, or are you just kind of like you're driving your Mercedes down the beach way? Yep. As long as the sand is tough in Daytona Beach, you go on to a ramp and you literally you drive, you find a parking spot, you get out. Some people only put a chair up by their car. Some people will walk to like the ocean, you know, the ocean's there. You just walk on, you, you don't walk around the area where the cars go. So cars are going back and forth. And then you have the area where you can enjoy. So not a place I would go if I had young kids, but as an adult, if you want to go to the beach and get like a hot dog or hamburger, I could just like literally drive on the beach, get a little, like one of those little <laughs> carts that they sell and then eat on the beach and then go back to work. And you don't and want I'm, to go too close to the water, though. I love the ocean. It's nice and warm right now. But you now, don't drive in it. No, 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 oh. no, 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 no. Unless you're looking to get on the news, and then you can drive right into it. <laughs> Anything to be famous. <laughs> exactly. Aye, aye, aye. How long have you lived down there? So I moved here two years ago to open up my father's uh, fifth art gallery, uh, Barker Animation Art Gallery. So, and that, uh, my dad passed away, and so... We closed uh, three galleries in South Florida. We only have two up north. So I decided to stay in Daytona Beach. It's really, it's lovely and the community is great. And so I'm the uh, vice president of SCORE. I'm the chairwoman for Healthy Souls International, which looks like we're going to Louisiana on Friday to help with Hurricane Laura clean up. And, um, and just, I founded a home here. So I actually, it's a great community. So I'm very excited. So I'm, I'm going to stay put. I think it's, I got, I found it my It sounds home. like you have a home anywhere and that just happens to be headquarters for now. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. Yes. I can tell your energy. I watched some of your videos and stuff. You're upbeat and looks like you're <laughs> always wanting to help out, make things happen, get your fingers and everything. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. I live a very simple life. So I make sure that I, I, I'm a servant leader. I just try to do for others. So your website, I was looking at it, it's promoproducts.guru. So you're a promo products guru too. Yes? Yep. I got that site about a couple years ago and promoindustry.guru. And um, I had to, uh, someone tried to take down my site. So I also have adrianbarker.com. Just easy, simple to Good to have to some it. backup. That's, that's yep, wise. Have that. You're a wise woman. Thank you. A lot of haters out there. <laughs> Oh, just people that are just disrupting stuff, you know, because yes. you, you're thinking about it, you're dealing with everybody on the internet and it's all over the world. So someone's going to do something somewhere. It's, it's just exactly. going to happen. So I've got a lot of little feelers out there too. You can find me by just Googling magic Brad, but I've got a lot of stuff out there. And sometimes people say, you know, I don't know what you do. Well, you don't have to know what I do. What do you want done? Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It sounds like you're that way. I mean, with working with SCORE and stuff, you're obviously networked with a lot of different people and, and SCORE works in a horizontal marketplace, everything from 
you know, unicorns to Amazons to all sorts of businesses, right? It's across the so spectrum. True. So true. Yeah. I, I, never, like I, I never could niche myself in a thing because I started doing magic when I was a kid, but the entrepreneurial brain, I got into doing jewelry. I got into doing t-shirts. I got into doing events. You can't really put me in a little pen. And I had an argument once when I lived in Nashville, North Carolina with someone that wanted to know, so what is it you do? You're a magician, right? I said, well, I do marketing and stuff too. Well, then you're a marketer, right? And it's like, quit trying to put me in a box. And she goes, I'm not trying to put you in a box. Yes, you are. <laughs> That's how I, but actually, some of the, the best events that I've ever been to have included a wonderful magician in the events. I am, um, are you part of Meeting Planners uh, International, MPI? Um, I was. I'm not now, but I was. Yeah, I was too. I was, uh, they have a great board. So I was the uh, VP of communications, but I just love, um, you know, growing up in the promotional products industry, obviously we do a lot of trade show and events and mm -hmm. then going into the event field. So actually even locally here, um, I'm part of a, of a nice network and I went red yesterday for the red alert that they have to, uh, to try to help support the events industry. Yeah, the event industry, um, my background is in the events, but now I've pivoted online because at first I thought, okay, events, hospitality, travel, and tourism. Everybody wants to travel. They want to move. That's just what humans do. Hospitality, that's everywhere. The whole travel world, the hospitality, tourism, people want to see other stuff. Other stuff. They want events. People are always going to want to go to events, concerts, fairs, festivals. And then all of a sudden COVID came along and went, er, how do you do? So we need help in the event industry. And it's good that you do that kind of stuff because a lot of people that they're, they're, they're not real innovative, they don't know what to do. They're like exactly. lost. So I actually, I have to say, I've been to a couple of networking events and I've worked with psychics and um, not a magician, but other people that are trying to get their name out there. And one thing that really does work is if you know that a company's having a, like a business networking on Zoom, any of these virtual events, it's fun to take a break from introducing everyone and have a magician. So you could still, still get jobs. I think that people that are doing these Zoom meetings with, you know, 50 people in the three hours long, hire someone to come in and play a little music, do some magician, help to get, promote whatever that, you know, whatever that is. Even painting live is fun and you could go back and yep. watch what they're doing. But we, we need to make sure that we're helping and that's a great way to do it. Taking a little break and watching a little magic is like, wow. And then you come back refreshed to listening to everyone who they are and what they do. Yeah, they're definitely doing it. They're doing it with the just virtual multi-camera thing and they're holding it just like a regular meeting and they got multiple cameras doing it from different points of view and things. It's uh, You just got to shift gears and make things happen a different way. Exactly. So about the prom promo products, how are you being able to adapt that into this situation where people don't touch each other? So glad you asked. Oh, this was actually used to uh, make my computer lift up. So this is a good <laughs> example of how you can connect people that are home. So this says the comfort and joy of working from home and then the person would receive it. So custom box could be a small one, large one. You could send oh. clothing, something comfortable for them to wear. Uh, a lot of people are doing buttons now, uh, so different things. But here, it's a nice box. And then when you open it up, here's just some nice products in it that help you to work from home with a nice oh. card. Puzzles. Oh, my favorite item. I love this one. Hi, I'm a little bottle of, I'm an opener. Look at me. I am a corkscrew. Oh. <laughs> and I can put, uh, and it goes on the refrigerator. So there's a ton of different items, you know, what people want, lip balm. So there's no, there's no, so that's really the idea is if you're having a sales meeting, start to send all the different stuff so everyone can come on and receive items. So whether it's a sure. reward, something comfortable. So we make that. So we have um, an event flip book actually that just came out. And so from, so when COVID-19 hit our industry, you may have heard that our industry, all the suppliers, take Hanes and anyone that has machinery were able to adapt their machinery to make PPE products. So gowns, masks, all of that, besides vetting it. So there's some that, you know, you're vetting the suppliers that are coming out of um, other countries. But locally here, mm -hmm. a lot of the PPE is being made. 
And so that's very exciting. And then of course, acrylics, a lot of companies have changed so they can make the acrylic uh, guards and all of that, that go into the stores and the, so we've adapted to make sure that we could take care of people's needs and our suppliers all pivoted pretty quickly to make sure that they were. Your industry is kind of designed for that to create custom kind of stuff that's unique to a person's goals and objectives. So very cool. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, so still plugging away after 35 years, um, but uh, I love it. So I, I would, and I work for a halo branded solutions, which is the, the second largest in the United States for the suppliers of the industry. So they're great. Did you just recently get involved with that? With uh, yes, I, had to, I, I grew up in the promotional products business, but I left the family business and I wrote a book, Brad, called Head Down, Shut Up. I was, uh, and still <laughs> am actually, uh, unfortunately, you really have, a, you can't really pick your family members. Um, I left due to my brother's inappropriate behavior uh, <laughs> that I was not going to be complicit with. I, I honestly... I really said it was 2016 during a Me Too movement. And I said, I am not going to stay. And my parents were at the time, they were about 85 years old, 85, 86. And they were kind of like, just like, I don't know what to do, Adrian. And I'm like, I don't know what everyone's doing, but I, I'm not staying. I'm not being part of this. I don't want to be any part of this. So I left the cushy, nice six figure wonderful, you know, working in the business that my parents, my mom and dad really started. They're the ones in 1955 that mm -hmm. created a beautiful business. And um, so it's been, uh, it's been difficult ever since. Both my parents are no longer alive. The same brother is the executor of the estate and uh, he's not kind. And he's, uh, and I think that, you know, it's funny because the one thing that they like to talk about me, what well, the one thing they say is I'm a bully. That's a, I'm a bully. I'm a bully. And it's like, I was like, I'm not even like, that's so not even my part of my personality. And every email, everything that they sent to me is like so nasty and mean. And it's like, it's a weird thing. Cause like, but whatever. So I am, um, I'm just moving on. They tried to uh, copy a, a website that I had. They're trying to hurt small little me when they're a very large business. And, you know, I'm just trying to, um, uh, you know, they, they're mad that I use my last name Barker too. Just they let like, it go uh, like like water off a duck's back, as they say. And the people yeah, that, the, gonna, people that call you a bully are actually bullying you. So, <laughs> but my dad was thrilled when I got the job with Halo. My dad was great because when he spoke to my brothers, he came back to me and said, "Adrian, your mom and I didn't start this business for you to be treated like this. So do your thing. Like, who would that be?" And I said, "Well, I'll go with the second largest." They were the third largest actually last year, but now they moved up. Um, but so, <laughs> you know, really, you're right. Like I just, you know, I just, uh, all because I just spoke the other day, I finally got up on stage and was able to share my story just to get it out once, to just feel like, okay, I can say it. Here's the truth. This is what I was going through. And then now, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable. You're like, you're like a therapeutic keynote speaker. <laughs> There you go. Release, pull off that steam. Very cool. I like it. So you got your fingers in multiple things. Which of the, the things is like your primary? Is it the promotional products as a, the foundation? Yeah, I love the promotional products. So that, that selling is very important to me. That, that um, you know, I just keep plugging away and I keep marketing myself. Uh, you know, I have Barker political products because I love selling pol to politicians. Mm -hmm. I love Barker. Um, I have Barker hotel products. I'm active in the hotel industry. So we have the Volusia County lodging and hospitality industry. I have Barker gifts because we could do one custom award or one custom gift with a logo on it. So I love that. Sure. So I just keep marketing. And then I, I, for my, for my gift to the community, I'm a graduate of the protocol school of Washington with my corporate, my international protocol and corporate etiquette. You know, I can consult, so I speak on that. So that's fun. So I'll go into schools. That's all completely donation. I love score because I love business. That's a hobby. And I, I'm doing something different. So I've always been a part of, you know, like, um, you know, something with, with children and, you know, homelessness. But this year I thought I would try to do something different. So I'm with Healthy Souls International, which is a disaster relief organization. I love like a sister. I love the founder, Maria Davila, here in town. She's our local hero. 
And it looks like we're going on Friday. So today's Wednesday, the first. So it looks like, or second, we're going on Friday to Louisiana for my first mission trip to see what that's <laughs> like. So I don't need to be rich and have a lot of money. I need to make sure that every day that I'm really doing something to touch lives. And I would say healthy souls, because it's new to me and I know nothing, is a challenge and it's exciting. Um, we also take care of feeding anyone that has COVID-19 and is um, isolated at home, but especially vulnerable are our seniors. And they receive a week's worth of groceries to their front door. And Maria had that vision um, right in March, right after it happened, like the next day after we shut down, she said, we need to, uh, we need to feed our local uh, vulnerable people. Everyone was doing the kids, right? So she knew right away we had to do our seniors. And that's, you got, so that's, yeah. you got so much stuff going on. It sounds like you're the kind of person that uh, like the hub, if anybody needs anything, they just contact you and you're probably somehow connected with it all. Possibly. I'm still new to town, but I also know when to say no. And when I, I don't want to be a failure <laughs> too. So, you know, a lot of things I have to say no. So sure. I'm active on a couple of committees of the chamber. I'm on the Halifax Arts Advisory. You don't Advisor. need to necessarily get active with it, but if someone had a question or something, you probably have yeah. an answer for it or a liaison to it. So it's like one degree of separation with Adrian. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Kevin Bacon, he's got too many degrees of separation. You're just, That's fun. You're just the liaison. You're the bridge to whatever needs to be done, right? Okay, I like that. I'll, okay. that I'll take way. it. Old. So with all these things that you got going on, what's the best way to just connect with you? Is there a specific like a domain name that's simple that people can oh, read? Yeah. So the, how, if the, someone watched this video and they go, my God, she's got connections. I need to connect with her. How do they find you? So I actually make it easy. So Adrian Barker, if you add the MAS at the end of it, the Masters of Advertising Specialties, I'll pop up. If you go Adrian Barker and add the word etiquette spelled correctly, <laughs> I'll pop up. So um, the only other Adrian Barker, there's a few other people, but there's a Sh Just Shoot Me, I think was a TV show that had an Adrian Barker in it. So weed through some of that, you really will find me. My phone number, 386-631-4577 is all over the internet. Uh, my email, adrian at promoproducts.guru. I am dot guru, no other one. And um, I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter. <laughs> I'm on TikTok. I'm on everywhere. So I'm easy to find. That's, that's kind of how I do it too. I use my brand as Magic Brad. And then if you Google it, you find me. You might find a couple other Brad magicians, but generally speaking, you'd find me. So it's Adrian Barker and you'll find you somewhere, somewhere. That's how I did it. <laughs> yep. Thank you. I thank you. Wait, well, do you do a little magic on your show? I have here and there. Here, here's one of the things that I like to do for that. Um, it's this right here, because magic is about perception. So if you look at these two fingers, if you can see that, that finger yep. and that finger, they're about the same size. Yes. From this point of view. From yes. my point of view, looking this way, this one is actually longer than that one. Isn't that weird? Wait, what? That is weird. Yeah, these are that way, and then that, that one's that way. It's, Whoa. It's just a sleight of hand, you'd call it. <laughs> Perception is reality. I Give love it. Give myself that. a round of applause. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, nice Adrian, looking, Brad, you're a nice looking guy hey i try i comb my hair this morning <laughs> no i don't i finger comb my hair I, I don't think i've had a comb go through my hair for 60 years <laughs> I love well, adrian it. i appreciate you taking the time today i'm gonna beam this up to the internet and i'll then share it with you and then if we could propagate it around the world and uh, who knows maybe i'll come down there i'll drive on the beach yes i would love that that would be awesome <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and energy. I love it. You too. Peace. Peace. Bye. Thank you.